So let us first define a petrochemical. Probably you're wondering what's the difference between a petroleum derived uh, product or a petrochemical or a petroleum refinery products and so on. So here we go. A petrochemical refers to all those components or compounds that can be derived from petroleum refinery products. So in order to be a petrochemical, you must obtain it via the petroleum refining. And not only that, it must be stated that these are simple compounds such as methane, ethylene, acetylene, and so on, but they are not multi-component products such as naphtha, gas, oil, etc. So what are we saying here? That a petrochemical is a single component, whereas the petroleum refining products are not a single component. So for instance, natural gas, is not a petrochemical because it has methane, ethane, and, and many other materials, mercaptane, and so on. For instance, methane can be considered a petrochemical, yes, even though it's not that common to use it as a petrochemical, but it is. Ethylene, for sure, because ethylene is a single material, which is, let, let me draw it for you, which is then used for plastics. So it's a petrochemical because it's only one chemical that is converted into another material. Is gasoline or otherwise known as petrol a petrochemical? No. By definition, it has multi components. So you have obtained, obtained, is obtained, and many other materials which are all pulled in the petroleum refinery. So all the materials go into this pool. They blend the materials here and you will have a gasoline product, which is not a petrochemical. But guys, if you were to separate isooctane, that will be by definition a petrochemical. Or for instance, if you have a certain amount of aromatics and you remove them, you got, I don't know, maybe benzene and toluene, and then you separate these into benzene and toluene. Yes, benzene will be a petrochemical and toluene will be a petrochemical. So that's very important, guys. Please ensure that whenever we're talking about petrochemicals, it's a one component material, which typically comes from a petroleum refined product. So naphtha, we're going to see later on, will be our raw material for several petrochemicals. Okay, as stated before, these are from petroleum, but they can also come from natural gas. Probably you're wondering which one. Well, if you take ethane and you take out the hydrogen, you will get ethylene. And ethylene, as stated before, it's used for polyethylene, which is a very common polymer used in plastics. Now, this is obvious. Petroleum and natural gases are both made from hydrocarbon molecules. What are hydrocarbons? CH, containing material which comprises of at least one or more carbons. Now, this is one of the best things you will hear. Probably you're wondering, why do we focus on petrochemical? Well, I don't want to uh, stop you or warn you, but actually only 5% of oil and gas is used or consumed for petrochemicals. The remaining 95% is, try to guess it, yeah, it's burned for energy. So only 5% is our demand. Actually, uh, the petrochemicals have a much higher price, but of course it's kind of hard to get a high demand. So probably try to imagine yourself, you are at home and try to see all the plastic materials, all the petroleum derived materials. And maybe you will say, I don't know, I have one ton of material, which maybe lasts three years. So your consumption of petrochemical might be one ton per three years. But guys, remember that electricity comes from burning fuels, fossil fuels. Your gasoline or the gasoline you use of your car is also very high. And also if you use natural gas or any gas material, maybe liquefied petroleum gases for your cooking, you're also burning that. Try to imagine the ratio. I'm pretty sure it's more than one ton per year, not maybe even more. So try, let me give a quick guess. I use a 60 liter tank. I, 
I refill it three times, so that's about 180 liters of gasoline. That's approximate, let's say, 150 kilos per month. So that's gasoline being burnt. So if you compare it, I actually use more petrol materials for energy rather than for uh, petrochemicals. So please try to remember this number. Only 5% will be used for petrochemicals. Still, petrochemicals are very important for our food, clothing, shelter, leisure, and whatever, mm, let's say, tasks you can imagine. I'm pretty confident that petrochemicals are present there. So uh, maybe you are a painter, you will be using a lot of materials that come from petrochemicals, even those that maybe you say, no, this cannot be, for instance, acetone, which is used to remove or to a uh, thinner or to the thinner the paint, that's also many times derived from a petrochemical. Maybe even ethanol, which you use to clean your materials, that might have also been produced as a petrochemical. We're going to see that later on. And why do we use petrochemicals? Because we have a lot of uh, raw materials. They are low in cost. So try to imagine a pet bottle versus a glass bottle. So they are pretty similar. Actually, this is much lighter. Just because the material is less, it's going to be lower in price. But this one right here, the glass is, requires high temperatures, materials that can be broken down, uh, destroyed or broken. So the plastic pet bottle will be much more lower in cost, much more convenient, lighter. Uh, it, it's, uh, it endures more physical damage and so on. So that's why we change typically all the applications towards petrochemicals. You're talking about clothing before we used to use, we have here you have cotton, which is, or wool, and now we're using polyester. Why are we using, or nylon? Why do we use that? Because it's, it's, it's much cheaper, it's much, it's much convenient, even though this is technically speaking much better for your uh, skin and so on. But still, we have plenty of applications. Nowadays, you can find pretty advanced textile materials, which can even be better than the natural ones. And let's, yeah, let's finish this little lecture. I just want to remember you guys, petrochemicals are very important. Please ensure that whenever we are talking about petrochemicals, we are using a one component material. So for instance, MTBE, which is very common, or maybe even sulfur can technically be assumed to be petrochemical. These are present in gasoline. This is MTBE, which is used for anti-knocking, for the anti-knocking of gasoline, and sulfur is kind of expensive to remove it, so we are going to have several parts per million present there. So those are separate petrochemicals that are blended into, let's say also octane, isoctane, they are all blended to make a petroleum refining product, which is the gas. Okay, so just ensure you don't confuse petrochemicals with petroleum refining products.